What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter. I'm really excited to share with you a new plugin for Sketch for Mac that I've been using a lot lately and it's been absolutely blowing my mind. Timeline by Anima is allowing me to use Sketch in a way that I never have before. Take it further than I ever have in the past. Not only can I design in Sketch, prototype a little bit in Sketch, but I can also create really complex animations and interactions inside of Sketch without having to leave and go to another program. Want to create a button and have an actual interactive hover state? You can do that using Timeline. Maybe you want a really cool loading animation? You can do that in Timeline. Maybe, just maybe, you want to export everything you've done to actual working HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? You can do that too using Timeline. Boom. If we look to the screen, you can see all I have to do is go to animaapp.com. They have a few different plugins. They have Launchpad and Auto Layout, which I think are super awesome too, but Timeline, whoo, Timeline is amazing. So you're gonna click on Timeline, you're gonna enter in your email, um, and you'll be able to start for free. You'll download, it's a plugin file. I've already installed it, but it's literally, you download it, open it up and double click it, and it will install it inside of Sketch. Uh, you can then open up Sketch and go to your plugins, and you can see that I have the Anima Toolkit. Um, we're really interested in, once you install it, this bottom right-hand panel that pops up that allows you to kind of manage your um, your information or manage your account stuff or get help or find tutorials. Uh, this little toggle switch which kind of moves it in and out. Where do you want it located? Over on that panel or outside of that panel. We have some more settings. You can minimize it and then you have each portion of the Anima Toolkit. You have like layout and over here you have launch pad. But we're looking at timeline. It's that little kind of like node leading over to another node, that's the icon for timeline, and that's the one we're looking at today. Once you're in there, you'll see there's uh, a few things. There's some tutorials you can hit. There's uh, links to the documentation, so you can see some of that stuff, which is really well written. Um, so you should definitely check that out. Or you can remove the timeline settings from a layer once you've applied it to a layer. We're gonna get there. Stay with me. We're still doing a tour of the interface, okay? The big two buttons you really want to remember are these ones down here. You can create animations. You can export GIF, video, or HTML from the animations. Or you can create a new interaction design, which is going to allow you to make like state-based kind of interactions, like on and off, left and right, you know, and, and reusable components that you can then export out to code. And that's pretty rad. So I, I guess to see this, I should put some stuff on the canvas. So I have a, an artboard on my canvas. And if I was just to draw, you know, a, um, a circle here, I'm gonna draw a little ellipse. I'm gonna put nice bright green ellipse in the middle of my canvas. To create an animation, you're not gonna wanna select an object or a layer, but an entire canvas. And so I can click the entire canvas and click animation, and it's gonna load my design into timeline. Now you notice, it's I'm still inside of Sketch. It's opened up a similar interface, and now you've entered the timeline interface. So over here, you no longer have layers, but you have keyframes. You have your ability to head back to Sketch up there on the top left, zoom in, zoom out. You can play your animation, right? You can play it once through or, you know, loop it over and over. And then you have all your export options. So I can export code and video and export a GIF. And there's some other options over here. We still have a contextual panel over here in the top right where I can change position and size and rotation and opacity and add something called actions, which we're gonna cover in a second. Down below on the bottom right, now we have an animation panel that's popped up. You can actually change the timing and the easing, if you're kind of familiar with those terms in animation, um, of our animations as they're happening. And then down on the very bottom, you'll notice the biggest and most obvious thing is you now have a huge timeline um, and you can drag a layer to create a timeline for that layer, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to, um, and, and you'll also notice that I have this little arrow that's saying I'm leading from this keyframe over to this keyframe and I can add another keyframe even. Let's do a simple one though, okay? So we're gonna take our ball and move it all the way to the bottom. It's like basic, uh, basic animation class right now, right? We're gonna move the ball over to the bottom and then we're gonna move this one kind of like a little bit above halfway. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my very first keyframe, my original keyframe. I'm gonna head up to my keyframes panel, right click and duplicate, and it's gonna create another keyframe 
in my animation. So now you'll see it's going from bottom to top, back to bottom. That is, these two items here are in the exact same position. So this could be a loopable animation. It could look really, really smooth, right? You'll notice as soon as we start animating these things on each keyframe, here's keyframe one, keyframe two, keyframe three, we have now got a little timeline, right? Each of our attributes are gonna appear down here. All the different individual elements um, or layers, so to speak, are, could appear down here. So we have our oval and it's uh, right now it's at 0.2 seconds. So we can move that out to one second. Now I'm gonna try play all and see what happens. My animation is playing all three of those keyframes and it's actually just doing the work for all of those different keyframes in between. So it's heading to the top and it's coming back down. It's heading to the top and it's coming back down. And then we can actually change our animation timing. So we have ease in and ease out, which is kind of fast at the start and it slows down, right? And then it's fast at the start and slows down. And we have these little handles here, so I can make it a little bit more aggressive. I could just pull these handles in like so. Now you'll see when I play my animation, the ball is shrinking, it's getting a little bit more opaque, and the timing has changed. Now it's important to note that this timeline can do way more. We have one element, one object, on our, on our kind of like timeline down there. But if we had multiple objects, like if there was three or four balls, each of them would be able to be animated. And you can do more than just stretch the timing out, you can also delay it by just grabbing the entire timeline and moving the whole thing out. Now that that last animation from, because I'm highlighted here on my blue arrow. So from here to here, there's gonna be a little 0.6 delay, 0.6 second delay each time. And so we can delay things. If we had multiple layers, we could stagger them. So now that I've created my entire animation, Anima has created a handoff shareable link that I can actually copy and share or just open up right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and it's given me an entire handoff site, right? A landing page where I can see my animation in action. And from here, I get to choose what I wanna do with it. I can either download it, embed it, or open it up in either JS Fiddle or CodePen. I can also invite people to the project by their email, or I can make the project public and share it with anybody. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in CodePen, and we'll see that it actually pre-populates all the fields inside of CodePen, runs my animation, and I can now share this link, and my developers can actually see not only the animation, what I had in my mind, but they can also see sample of the code. If they wanna use this code or tweak the code, they can do all of that right here. Over here, I have a simple hover. You can see I have like a click me inside. And in my mind, I'm imagining that, you know, when you hover over that button, that, that ellipse would actually kind of animate out and, you know, actually make space to show the message inside. That's what I'm kind of hoping from that. It's a really, really simple thing to do. I have my two layers. One of them is hidden and one of them is visible. I'm gonna grab my artboard and I'm gonna come down here and select interaction. And now you can see I have state one and state two. Before they were keyframe one and keyframe two, specific to animation. Now we're doing state-based interactions, which is really, really similar with a few kind of like caveats to it. So over here in our first state, you can see exactly what the user will see before it's rolled over. Over here, we wanna create some sort of end state. We have a beginning state and an end state, right? So over here, we can just do a little bit of editing and just stretch my button out exactly like I imagined and click on or just you know reveal my message in between. Now what we wanna do is when we click on any element, right? we can hit this little lightning bolt icon over in you know the right-hand side of the object. I'm gonna tap it and I'm gonna to link to the next state. I'm gonna say on mouse enter, I think. That's what we want, right? Yeah, on mouse enter, we want it to animate to this, right? Then we're gonna click on this one and we will do the same thing. We'll lead back and we'll say on mouse leave. I can run the component, which is what we really wanna do. I'm gonna run the component and now you can actually interact with it. And we can see exactly how it's functioning. It's kind of perfect, it's exactly what I wanted. What if we wanna create a fun animation that has multiple pieces animating at once? This little timeline icon is black in comparison to the other green ones. That's because this one is an animation and the green ones are an interaction or a component. So I wanna go over and check out our animation of this little potion bottle that I made in Sketch. 
So you can see um, I have a couple different states, right? I have the first state, this is like just a little bit more of a complex version of the bouncing ball that we did. I have my original state and then I have my, um, my filled state and then back down to my original state. And these are all different layers inside of Sketch. You can see my potion has lots of different layers to it. It has bubbles and reflections and all sorts of stuff. Over here, what I've done is I've, I've created this little fake slider. And so the animation is gonna so, show the sliding of the slider over and back. And as it slides, the potion is going to raise and the bubbles are going to move. And then it's gonna head back to its original state. So let's play all and see how it looks. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fun to make. So that's how to do a little bit more of like a complex animation. But what if we want to do like a real world example of, of more complex component or interaction? Well, over here, I have a little website that I was designing uh, with some cool vertical text. And I had in my mind, I had imagined like my hamburger menu tapping and my navigation sliding out from the right and having kind of some cool animation with it. I'm just going to click inside of the component inside of timeline and you can see I have state one and I have state two and you'll notice just like we did before with the bubbles we kind of offset some things so the idea is my menu is gonna slide out but then each one of my individual navigation elements is actually gonna slide out in different timing so you can see I have glasses apparel lifestyle and cart and there's those links right here so they're all gonna be sliding out in delayed format and then sliding back over with the whole thing. So you'll notice when I click on my other animation, the, the arrow line going from right to left, they're all gonna slide back with the menu. I could have offset those two. I kinda like this look, but let's, let's run the whole component. And now we have our website right in front of us. And when I click my navigation, really smooth. It just popped right out and each one of those nav elements animated in the way that I wanted to. I could have gotten real crazy. I could have I could have stopped the component and over here in my layers I could find glasses. Where is it? My menu. I could find glasses and I could be really crazy with it. I could like rotate it or something so that it's rotated. And then I wonder what the component would look like cuz oh, it's going to like rotate and swing in from its original rotation state into the state that we kind of told it to be. So that's like a little bit crazy. But you can see there's a lot you can do here inside of, just right inside of Sketch. You don't have to go to another platform and you can do some of those complex animations. You can export out the code, which is absolutely mind blowing. Now I don't have to worry about how to build my custom slide out responsive navigations. I just do it all right here and export the code out and it's done for me. I wanna see how that looks. So you can see it's all working right here in my browser. It looks super beautiful. I can even try to open it up in JS Fiddle this time and see how that works. Just close that. Let's see, let's bring this over so it's in view. And sure enough, everything's working perfectly right here inside of JS Fiddle. And I have access to all of the code. I can modify it if I want. I can keep it exactly the same. It's up to you. But the fact that that work is already done, mind blowing. Well, that's it. That's Timeline made by the people over at Anima. It's absolutely amazing, so smooth, and I told you, mind-blowing. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave those down in the comments section. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and doing more than you thought you could do in the past. I'll see you in the next one.